Hollywood is one of the most highly competitive places on earth. Millions of people want to become a stars, but the number of available seats is limited. So not everyone can be a star. Someone lacks talent, someone lacks luck, someone chooses the wrong role. Perhaps because of these reasons, Thomas Jane could not take its place on Olympus. But he certainly left his mark. I would like to dwell on his creative path and those moments when he showed the brightest. Thomas Jane can be called a very unlucky actor. He did a lot of good movies. Or rather, they were such only after some time. The audience initially tried not to watch them. And critics regarded Jane as very disparaging. Started his career as an actor in the early 90s. He began his career in rather difficult circumstances. When I was a kid in Los Angeles, I was homeless. I didn't have any money and I was living in my car. I wasn't averse to going down to Santa Monica Boulevard and letting a guy buy me a sandwich. Know what I mean? In 1992, Thomas appeared in two famous films at once. The first was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. During production, there were many scandals, and because of this few people paid attention to the aspiring actor. And the second movie of the year was Nemesis. Jane was an extra in the background of Olivier Gruner and Carrie Tagawa. Both films' success was bypassed. And starring in small roles for little money, Jane had a few more years. You can see it in the cult face-off if you pay close attention. In the same year, he starred in a movie with Keanu Reeves. The project was small, critics disliked the film and the audience. And at the box office, the last time I committed suicide, collected only $46,000. We can say that the breakthrough for Jane was in 1998. He starred in two films Thursday and The Thin Red Line but the breakthrough is loudly worded. The fact that in the war movie The Thin Red Line he got lost among the many famous actors. And the fate of the movie Thursday was difficult. When the film came out, no one understood it, and critics destroyed the picture. Roger Ebert called it the worst movie he had ever seen. It grossed an unbelievable $3,000 at the US box office and was quickly removed from theaters. Though the film is not a cult one now, it has a good rating on the film's main screenings. Only in 1999 was the film Deep Blue Sea by Rennie Harlan released. Thanks to this film, a white audience and learned such an actor as Thomas Jane. Despite the big budget of 60 million, the filmmakers saved even on a parrot. The budget for Deep Blue Sea was not as large as Rennie Harlan wanted, and so when it came to getting the parrot for the film, they couldn't afford a Hollywood parrot that had been trained and had to get to from Mexico City to use in the movie. This also explains the rather dim cast for such a budget. Severin Burroughs and Thomas Jane were completely unknown actors at the time, and Samuel L. Jackson offered himself for filming. Jackson made the film because he wanted to do a monster movie. And the main budget of the film went to the sets, sharks, and special effects. And here we can say that Jane, with the role, finally got lucky in a big project for the lead role, although he was a rookie. In the same year, there were two films with comparable budgets, The Matrix with a budget of 63 million, and The Mummy with a budget of 80 million. And there were two stars of that time Brendan Fraser and Keanu Reeves. Rennie Harlan's Deep Blue Sea scored 75 million due in the United States, and 164 million globally from a 60 million budget. That's a perfect number for an original property released over 20 years ago. And after he participated in the big project, Jane was called to big Hollywood and European projects. Under Suspicion failed without a chance at the box office. His participation in Magnolia was hardly noticed. And in Original Sin his participation did not save the film from a box office failure. And when it seemed like it couldn't get any worse, Thomas agreed to star in The Sweetest Thing with Cameron Diaz. The actress was a superstar at the time. The comedy with her was expensive, and the creators counted on good box office receipts. But something went wrong, and a film with a budget for a comedy of 43 million could earn only 68 million. A little earlier Eden failed at the European box office, where Thomas had one of the leading roles. In 2003, Jane decided to take part in another expensive project. And he agreed to the role because of his mother who loves Stephen King. Dreamcatcher is just a novel by the writer. Something mystical was happening in the production of the picture. At first, the production process lasted 1.5 months because of various difficulties. And after the film's test screenings went very severely, Warner Studio tried to get rid of the adult rating. And no matter how hard the editors tried, they failed to eliminate adult scenes. 
As a result, Dreamcatcher had to be reshot. The studio completely remade the end of the picture. The original budget increased by $15 million. And the film had no competition at the box office, but the film was a disaster. With a budget of $68 million at the worldwide box office managed to collect only $75 million. Such a powerful failure ended the career of director Lawrence Castan, who had previously produced Grand Canyon and French Kiss. The director admitted in later interviews that Dreamcatcher dealt his career a crushing blow. He lost several lucrative contracts. Studios simply terminated contracts with him and refused to produce. What saved Thomas Jane was that he was not alone in the movie. The responsibility for the failure was shared between several actors, Morgan Freeman, Damien Lewis, and Tom Sizemore. After several failures, Jane had a chance to make things right with the Punisher. But the miracle didn't happen. Of course, it's not Thomas Jane's fault, the Punisher is a failure at the box office. But it was Jane's 10th consecutive failure. And once again, it was not without problems on the set. The film's budget was cut several times, and the script was constantly rewritten. And director Jonathan Hensley several times almost got fired. For Hensley, the Punisher was his debut. Jane took the failure of this particular film very hard. The actor was so upset that even some time later refused to play in the sequel. The actor said he did not believe in the movie and did not want to get together in another trash. After The Punisher, the actor wanted to please his mother again and starred in another film based on Stephen King's script. This time Frank Darabont shot The Mist and invited Thomas to the lead male role. The Mist did well at the box office and on a budget of 18 million, could gross 57 million. It wasn't noticed by many in those years recognition for the film came later. Initially, the film's budget was supposed to be twice as much. But the studio persuaded the director to change the ending. But since Darabont refused to change anything, the studio decided to cut the budget in half. Because of that, the director started saving and refused his fee. While Darabont was arguing with the studio, Jane offered to take part after the mist in a project that few people believed in at the time called Thomas for the lead role in the series Mad Men. Jane immediately refused to star in the series. After a while, Mad Men would become one of the greatest TV hits and lasted seven seasons. The series would receive many Golden Globes and other awards during that time. John Hamm, who just came in to replace Thomas Jane, also got his Golden Globe. And instead of Mad Men, our hero went to do B-movies. Some of these films were even going to be released in wide distribution. But test screenings of these pictures persuaded the creators not to do so. Jane did not want to give up and tried to return with a 15 million project Give Him Hell Malone. But after all the same test screenings, the picture was sent directly to the video. In 2009, seeing the success of Mad Men, Jane decided it was time for him to star in the TV series. His hung was not a big success, and because of low ratings it was closed after three seasons. The actor would even get a nomination for a Golden Globe. Here again Jane was unlucky. Before filming Hung he was offered the role of The Walking Dead. But he turned it down, deciding that women's company would be much more pleasant than in the company of zombies. Thomas Jane often appears in the same films as Nicolas Cage and Bruce Willis. These films are rated about 3 or 4 out of 10 points. And they are not usually shown on the big screens. Sometimes Thomas is invited to small independent movies for starring roles, but these films do not enjoy particular popularity with a wide audience. And if he appears in a relatively large project like The Predator, the project fails, and Jane goes to star in the next movie category B. Now Thomas is only 53 years old, and it is too early to write him off, though it is hard to believe in his success.